imagine you're starving hungry and you really need a burger. You could have this burger, or if you wait a moment, you could have this burger. Which would you choose? Now, there isn't a right or wrong answer. It depends on the criteria that you use. Is it immediacy or is it hunger? Now, your customers will have a similar criteria, and your job is to find out what it is. Like footsteps in the sand, you need to uncover your customers' needs, but their most important needs, before, like water, it washes away. Now, the industry, sales industry, the world has changed, and buying has become more difficult. But also, selling is more challenging. So it's about focusing on what's most important to your customers. So in the next 18 minutes, I'm going to tell you how you can become the best choice for your customers. First, I'd like you to get into the head of your customers, to experience the world as they do, to think like your favorite customers. Have you got that in your head? Your favorite customers. Because the only way you should be viewing the world is through the eyes of your customers. They're the ones that are buying your products and service. They're the ones that are most important. Noticed this customer, there was one thing that was important to them, and nothing was going to get in their way to get it. So, let me tell you a story about I worked with uh, a, a company called Cambridge University Press, and they sold English language books. So, I worked with this global team from director down to manager. So, these People came from Chile, China, South Africa, Russia, and they all had a lot of experience. However, lots of their um, customers were leaving them to more innovative incumbents, companies, other companies. The re their sales revenue was going down, so they had a problem. So these sales people had been in their jobs for many years. But the one thing that they weren't doing is really understanding the changing customers' needs. So think about the ministries that they sold to, the regional education boards and schools. For them, the buyers thought, we need more school books. But the customer customer, who's the student, at the time, they were being exposed to more digital content, digital TV, YouTube. They wanted devices. They didn't want more books. So the customer customers' behaviors were changing. And for the schools, their registrations were going down. So I helped this sales team to understand the priorities, the needs, and the change in behaviors was most important. And that's what they needed to uncover, and that's what they weren't doing. So they started asking a different questions and discovered that the priority here was the falling registrations. So the offer changed. It changed to teachers' training. It changed to digital devices. It changed to online material. The value of these items were much higher than a book. So the result was that, obviously, the registrations went up because the student wanted these devices. But also, 
the revenues doubled for this company in less than a year and continued to double as they rolled that out. So price is what your customers pay, but value is what they're incentivized to gain. They're looking for value. But value increases when it's associated with the customer's most compelling, most immediate priority. This is why priority is the driver for sales in 2023. Now, previously, we were asked to look at pain points. Pain points is the thing that we're selling to. Find your customer's pain. Has anyone else heard that? Pain points, yeah. Customer's pain. But pain points are temporary. Sometimes it's just time that deals with the pain point. It will resolve itself. Priorities are stable and evolving. They're immediate, but they move on to another priority and another priority. And it positions you as the trusted advisor when you can help the customer identify their pain points. It also helps you to tailor the advice to what's most compelling to them. And also, it activates the buying decision because this is what they're most willing to put their money to now. That's why you need to know what it is. So my question to you, if you were to identify your customer's most compelling problems, the things that really engages them, what impact would it have on your customer relationships? How would they see you? So we've talked about priority. What else is your customer looking for? So I'd like to tell you another story about uh, working as a customer experience consultant and we worked with Boots. Now, Boots is a pharmaceutical and beauty retailer. And we discovered that over a period of time, they had falling revenues. And it was really, there was lots in the news about this company. It was around 2005 about this company may go out of business. And it was one of the mainstays of the high street. So we interviewed the floor staff, the manage, shop managers, and many of the customers, and discovered that many of them were abandoning their baskets because they were getting so frustrated. They were going round and round and round, trying to find what they were looking for. Now, I don't know how many here, raise your hands, have been in that situation. You're on a website and you can't find the button, yes. Or you're in a store and you're going round and you can't find what you're looking for, yes. It's really frustrating. So we changed the store. We changed it and we put signs up, symptoms. So we had um, hay fever in the summer and we changed that around to flu and colds. And below that section was everything they needed for that symptom. We had dental section and everything they needed in that section. So customers came in, we also reduced the stock because we discovered that the way the floor was laid out was by pharmaceutical brands because it was easier to do the stock take. So we changed all of that. We put more cash tills at the front and we reduced the stock by 30%. Customers now could come in, get what they wanted and leave really quickly. Instead of the staff rushing around, helping the customers, directing them, the, the staff was at the front, cashing out. The customers were able to pick up more. The baskets more or less doubled because not only did the, prior, the signing help them select the priority, exactly what they came in for, but it made it really easy for them to find other items as well. So their revenue, more or less overnight, went up by 40, an additional 40%, and it kept going up. But you can imagine, if it's easy for your customers to get what they want, that's exactly what they're there to do. So you've got to apply the customer's perspective. Remember I said, think like your customer, and create simple processes that are led by the customer first. 
So my question to you is, what does this look like? It's a mess, isn't it? Now, this is a typical B2B buying journey, and I'm getting a headache. I don't know about you, just looking at it. It's crazy. We create so many barriers and blocks in our processes for our customers. We make it so difficult for them to work with us. It's crazy. Sales is so internally focused. We call it a sales process, whereas actually the statistics tell us that buyers want simplicity and ease. They want self-service. So why don't we call it the buying process and focus on the customer? That's what you need to be focused on, how your customers buy. So this is what it really looks like. Chaotic and difficult. 77% of B2B buying experience, last purchasing buying experience, this is Gartner's research, said that it was difficult. It was difficult and it was complex. That's the experience your buyers are having. So for the sellers that are simplify the process, that give the customers what they need to move them on to the next stage, the customers brought three times as much and had less remorse in the buying process. So you've got to move from complex to simplicity. <laughs> how the top, thank you for that, I've got a little clap there. Um, <laughs> have you noticed how the top 10 brands have simplicity at their core? Success leads clues. So, simplicity. My question to you, if you, your processes within your business were less complex, if you applied simplicity and ease, what, would, what impact would this have on your customer's experience? What impact would it have on the retention of your customers? Yeah? Okay, so let me give you another story, talking about uh, customers and future-proofing them. I, I worked with a customer experience consultant. We, I used to create these journeys. So we'd get a brand in, and I'd have the executives sitting down with the tech team, the engineers, the marketing, and salespeople. The customers would come in, and they'd have to do a journey or some kind of task. And uh, the brand team had to sit there quietly and watch or do the journey with them. Always, always, we discovered that customers were your best innovators and creators. Always. And the engineers were amazed because these were journeys that they had designed, but the customers always found the shortcut, the quickest and easiest way to get to what they wanted. Your customers are the best creators and innovators. And the problem is we don't ask them. We don't ask our customers. It's crazy. They can co-create the solution with you. So you've got to ask your customer. But also, if your customers have customers, you should be asking them too. So it's about creating those feedback loops, 
because your customers are your best innovators and creators. We've really got to take the blinkers off. The sales industry is internally focused, and we need to turn that to be externally focused. We need to understand that customers have the solution and bring them in to help us co-create what that may look like. We always think we know best, but we don't. Trust me, your customers are sitting there solving problems all the time. You know, even a baby is a great problem solver. A baby's hungry, what does it do? It cries. A baby's really hungry, what does it do? It screams. They're great problem solvers, so are your customers. And it's really about you creating those feedback loops to get those information, to bring them in, to help that you to co-create what is the best solution for your customers. So you've got to think beyond just enough. And what I mean by this is that in sales, we often ask just enough questions to lead our customer to the solution we want. We need to stop doing that. We need to ask the questions to uncover what are the priorities, what's most compelling, what's the criteria that your customers apply. So think beyond now and also think towards what's next. Once you've got your customer, what's next for my customer? What's next on the horizon? What should I be informing them about? So set up those feedback loops, not only for your customers, but for your customer customers, because they'll tell you what they want. Think of when you've got a car in the dashboard. How many of you here raise your hands when you think, if only, if only they did it like this, if only. We're always thinking, if only, so are your customers. So my question to you is, does your research lead you to understand what are your customer triggers, what are their behaviors, what's coming around the corner for your customer, what unmet needs are there now, but also what opportunities there are in the future. What I'd like you to do, you may want to take a picture because tomorrow I want you to go into your teams, go into your teams and ask them about the priorities, the simplicity and the future opportunities of your customers. This is what you need to be uncovering right now in your teams. These three questions that I've asked you here today. So I've got one last question for you. Now, hopefully you're sitting there thinking like your customer, like your favorite customer. You're seeing the world as they do. You're experiencing the world as they do. So with your customer in mind, what would you do differently today? Thinking like your customer, what decisions would you make that are different? Go make those decisions. Thank you.